We present a robotic anterior resection utilising the natural orifice intracorporeal anastomosis with extraction of specimen, or NICE procedure, for the management of recurrent acute diverticulitis not relieved by non-operative management, with a focus on the step-by-step -step approach to this method, utilising the Da Vinci XI platform. This could be considered a form of natural orifice specimen extraction surgery, or NOSES. A 69-year-old female presented with CT-proven recurrent acute sigmoid diverticulitis non-responsive to conservative management. The patient had been admitted three times in the year up to her operative intervention to manage these episodes, with further courses of oral antibiotics as an inpatient. The patient's relevant past history included rheumatoid arthritis, for which she was on methotrexate and hydroxychloroquine, a gastric bypass procedure via midline laparotomy many years prior, vaginal hysterectomy, cholecystectomy, and appendicectomy, as well as ventral rectopexy for rectal prolapse with a biodesigned collagen graft in 2015. Preoperative CT demonstrated recurrent mild to moderate acute sigmoid diverticulitis within a redundant sigmoid colon. A coronal slice here demonstrates the associated bowel wall thickening and associated fat stranding. CRP at the same time as the pictured CT was elevated at 74 mg per litre, the patient was managed with further antibiotics prior to being consented and booked for operative intervention. Preoperative CRP was 2 mg per litre and preoperative colonoscopy excluded underlying malignancy. The patient was fasted and routine mechanical bowel preparation was prescribed. The patient was given intravenous cefazolin and metronidazole on induction. The patient was placed in low lithotomy with 15 degrees Trendelenburg and 12 degrees left sided tilt. A rectal washout with dilute iodine using a rectal tube was performed. Optical entry using a 5mm applied key Fios port and 5mm zero degree laparoscope was performed in the right upper quadrant. Four 8mm robotic ports were inserted under division in the typical array for robotic anterior resection as pictured on the left, though in simple cases the fourth can be omitted to reduce cost. Due to extensive prior surgery causing small bowel adhesions, a lateral to medial dissection was performed in this case. Tip-up grasper in the fourth arm and fenestrated bipolar graspers in the left hand were used to retract the sigmoid and descending colon. Monopolar curved scissors commenced the lateral to medial dissection, preceding kephalad to the flexure. Adhesions due to sigmoid apexy performed during prior ventral rectopexy were divided. The left ureter was identified, protected, and preserved. Continued dissection through the left paracolic gutter allowed the mobilization of the descending colon. Further mobilization of the upper rectum was performed. Evidence of diverticulitis was encountered with adhesions divided from the diseased sigmoid colon to the bladder and pelvic side wall. The distal transection site was marked in the mesorectum. To facilitate transrectal specimen extraction, the dissection line should be in the upper rectum, not rectosigmoid junction. The proximal transection site was then marked in the disease-free colon. Assessment of colonic length is not performed at this juncture. To reduce specimen bulk, given benign disease had been confirmed prior to surgery, resection proceeded along the sigmoid mesentery, close to the colon using the vessel sealer in the left hand. The inferior mesenteric artery and superior rectal artery were preserved. The cancer cases, a standard high tie of the IMA and oncological resection of the mesentery, is performed. The upper rectum was then transected using the vessel sealer. Some authors recommend avoiding diathermy here and using the scissor function alone to avoid thermal injury near anastomosis. But because larger circular staplers are used, the tissue is generally excised during the double purse string anastomosis. 
In surgery for malignancy, the specimen ends are stapled using a sure form 60mm blue load stapler via a 12mm port placed in the right lower quadrant. In this case, a PDS ender loop was secured to the distal aspect of the specimen, which closes the specimen and allows for easier retrieval, though this is not mandatory. The proximal bowel was then transected along a healthy portion of bowel in the descending colon. Again, in malignancy, a stapler would be utilised for this step. A small sized soft Alexis retractor is then introduced via the rectum using a Rampley, as they are longer and easier to place. Otherwise, a cocker could be used. The small soft Alexis is key, as it smooths the extraction pathway by flattening rectal valves, shortens the length of the rectum, and protects the rectal cuff from tearing and trauma. The specimen was then retrieved by grasping onto the prior secured endo loop. For cancer, a 15mm endo catch bag is used. In contrast to the original description, circular motion assists with extraction whether in the endo catch or not. A double purse string stapled anastomosis was performed. A 33mm circular stapler anvil is passed transanally. We have found a bigger stapler better, 33 or 31. The Alexis retractor was then removed easily with a cocker. The anvil was placed into the colon and then a 3.0 V-lock suture was used to fashion a purse string to secure the stapler anvil in place. A PDS endo loop was again utilised to snug the colon around the anvil spike. In contrast to original technique, PDS is used around the anvil instead of Vicryl. The robotic platform makes suturing the 3.0 V-lock much easier and more efficient. A further purse string suture was placed in the distal rectum. Placement is easier with the stapler pistol in situ. In this case, the 3O broke, and the authors now use 2O for this step. We hold the stapler in place with a drape clip, making the distal purse string easier to place. In contrast to original description, we use a 2O V lock for the purse string as there is less breakage. However, this step is purely for lining up the edges of the bowel to allow for the endo loop step to get the thick anastomotic donuts. A PDS endo loop was again utilised. This does require an experienced assistant and reach can be problematic. We have found a double endo loop is possible by placing a port more cordially and this can overcome reach problems. An alternative is to run a second V-lock around the spike. In a routine fashion, the stapler anvil was engaged with the pistol. Correct orientation was confirmed. Injection of 10 mL intravenous endocyanine green confirms vascularity using firefly mode. There has been no anastomotic problems in our technique with the use of diathermy or vessel sealer transaction of bowel, in contrast to the cold cut technique stated by the original authors. Interrupted 3O Vicryl was utilised to reinforce the anastomosis. The mesentery was freed medially in this case to ensure the anastomosis was completely tension free. This selective approach is helpful, especially where the sigmoid is redundant, though, as with original description, full splenic flexural mobilisation is performed where necessary. We just completed in a retrograde fashion after completion of anastomosis. Finally, an insufflation test was performed to ensure no leak at the anastomosis using a colonoscope. The 8mm port sites below the umbilicus were closed using transfascial ovicryl and the skin is closed with hysteroacryl glue. Total operating time was 150 minutes. Histopathology demonstrated moderately severe diverticular disease with acute diverticulitis and abscess formation. The longitudinal margins were not inflamed. The image on the left demonstrates the anastomosis and no residual diverticulosis. The patient had an uncomplicated postoperative course. The indwelling catheter was removed in theatre. Oral analgesia alone was used with paracetamol and PRN to pentadol. No intravenous fluids were prescribed postoperatively, and the patient was discharged on postoperative day two. The authors of this vignette would like to thank Eric Haas and his team for their work who originally described this technique in their publication in 2019.